the gong is a, is a great tool for yoga, I think. Mm. That was my passion now, is to let people know that this gong is like, you know, we play music in class sometimes, and we chant mantras, but this is the source of all mantras and all music. All sounds come from the gong. So why not go to the primal source? You know? With the gong, you can create any kind of soundscape you want, uh, and you can work it with your breath. The breath of fire with the gong was interesting, wasn't it? Did you hear your breath disappear and then came back? You know? And chanting with the gong, you know? Because when you guys were chanting sometimes, you, I could, it, you, the gong was chanting back, you could hear it in, this, in these molecules, you hear them like chanting back at you. And uh, it's a really pretty powerful thing to do. Th 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 there is a separation of the astral body from the physical body during the gong playing. It opens up the crown chakra very deeply. At the time, you know, the, the gong was, one of the, one of the purposes of the gong in the old days was at the time of the passing of the kings or the queens or the great people, they would play the gong to allow the soul to leave the crown of the head, you know, to, the subtle body to leave the body and to open up the crown energy for psychic uh, abilities and experiences. So a lot of times uh, they would play the gong to awaken the intuition or to open the crown. And that association you had of, the, of levitation or leaving the body is just simply the energy beginning to move from the body to these other realms. So it's, it really does work a lot of the crown chakra and the sixth chakra. And it, as you notice, it probably opens all the chakras, doesn't it, when you play it. Sometimes people experience joy or sadness or fear or elation because all these energy centers are, are starting to awaken as you play these sounds. And the beautiful thing about the gong is, is it starts to resonate at where, you need to, where you need to receive it. Because the, the nature of this gong sound is so complex, that's why it's so incredible. You strike the gong and there's waves of sound that come out. And then I strike it again, there's another wave that comes out. I strike it again, there's another wave that comes out. So you got all these waves building on top of each other. And after a while, your mind can't see, I can't figure this out. There's too many overtones, combination tones, waves of energy. I'm just going to start hallucinating. And that's what you do. Inside yourself, you start to hallucinate this, this other way of being with the sound. And that's why everyone has this different experience. That's why it's so therapeutic. And uh, it's used a lot in healing practices for like schizophrenia, psychosis, drug addiction, uh, physical conditions like tinnitus, uh, migraines. You think a migraine will get worse with that? Mm -hmm. It goes away. It's incredible. Yeah. So uh, there's a lot of healing energy in the sound as it comes through you like that, and it, it realigns you. And I love it because it's a natural, it's kind of a free ride. You, you, you work a little bit to get there, but when you're there relaxing, the sound doesn't work for you if you relax. So I think it's like a, a, a fast track to spontaneous meditation. You know, it's like, it takes you right there. And uh, it's a wonderful thing. When you're within three feet of the gong, it starts to affect you at a really deeper vibrational level. The physical body responds deeply. So, I mean, I, I just feel extremely high and healthy when I'm listening to the gong playing. It's a very selfish thing to do. <laughs> so I love the gong, as you can tell, right? I love the gong. And uh, I'm passionate about it. I've written a couple of books about it. Uh, I do a lot of trainings with the gong, how to play the gong, therapy trainings, uh, training for yoga teachers using the gong. Uh, we'll be doing more of that here this weekend. Uh, but. Uh, it's, it's a very, uh, it's a very, it's, it's, it is the instrument of the yogi. It is the instrument of the yogi. So, uh, because with this we can work with all the chakras. And when you're playing, when you're chanting or relaxing, you play different areas of the gongs, they affect different chakra centers, right? Different areas of the body even can be affected by the areas you play. And when you play fast, energy rises more quickly through the chakras. But I wanted you to kind of come back into your body when you were gone in the ceiling. <coughs> you play down low like this and you start to play slower and ground down. So what the gong does, it amplifies and directs the energy of the class and of the, of the, of the teacher. So uh, it's, a very, it's a good way to actually connect prana together in the classroom and from the teacher to the students. And it's actually very good for nerve regeneration. They use a lot when the nervous system has been damaged by drugs uh, or when the nervous system may have been damaged by injury. Um, I, the story I like to tell, and I wish I knew who this person was in England because I've heard the story, I've read about it, I don't know the, the veterinarian's name, but there's a veterinarian in England, that takes the gong around to horses that he works on who have, who have sprained their legs. He plays the gong for that, and the healing accelerates. He, he has noticed healing increases more quickly in recovery. So it has a lot of physical properties too, not just the uh, energetic properties. Especially if you're sound sensitive, like if you had trauma associated with loud noises. Again, since I'm in London, my story is that I actually had a woman in my class who went through the bombings in London in the 40s. And when I played the gong, she just, she completely went back there. It's like, wham, she's back in the bomb shelter, you know? And it, it, it was very scary for her, but she was able to hold that now in this new space and time. So she was able to process that trauma. It's like, okay, 
I'm here now in this room, it's different, but that same trauma is coming back from that sound. So sometimes it does trigger old traumas or releases mm -hmm. like that. And some people do find it difficult to deal with. I, I bet there's a few people in this room who would probably want to jump out and run screaming. Maybe not, because you guys have got strong nervous systems, I think. But a lot of times there's one out of 15 people who think this is the most horrible thing you can do to them. And they have that reaction to the trauma, the release, and it's just unpleasant. But if they continue, if they can go through it, mm. it clears it out. Mm. But it, you, know, it, you have to be brave sometimes to actually encounter it at that level for some of the people like that. It's called a symphonic gong. A symphonic gong means, uh, well, they used to play them in symphony orchestras, but they also, it ha symphonic gongs have a very wide range of sound as opposed to an individually tuned gong, which they do have tuned gongs that are tuned to a one specific frequency to have an effect. So I, I, these are the best, I think these are the best gongs ever for yoga and meditation. And this size is one of the very best sizes, a 32 inch. They come in all sizes as small as 20, I think they have a 22 inch or 20 inch gong, very small, to as big as 72 or 80 inches. I, I stood in front of an 80 inch gong one time, they were playing it, I was like about this far from the gong, I was wearing these kind of clothes, my shirt was blowing. There was no wind, but my shirt was moving. It was that much sound wave coming out. And they used to make the gongs in Java and the Indonesia area, and they would cast them into the ground. But these gongs are made from a big flat sheet of metal that they bend and roll, and they, they you see all these little, you can see these little indentions? These are all hand hammered. They heat and hammer these eight times around and around and turn the metal and make this amazing sound of just a sheet of metal of copper, uh, brass, tin, zinc, other metals like that. And they do a polished job on it and they tune them. You can tune these gongs to different frequencies. They have different gongs for different frequencies you can play, different healing work. But yes, they're, uh, they're made by human beings. So th these gongs are very incredible um, in terms of just, the, the, they're, they are sacred, they're magic. Um, I think they're just a, I, I, I definitely feel there's a spirit in every gong I play. I know there's some, they're all very individual, they're individually made, and so everyone has a, a little slightly different sound, and, um, it's just, uh, I think it's the closest thing you can get to, uh, to a portal to another place. Mm -hmm.